year, I was on a uh, panel that was the jury for the World Health Organization's uh, film festival. And that that's quite informative for a, a panel such as this, um, because we started to see documentaries about disease and illness and, and that around the world and how that really affects and impacts filmmaking. And I see that we can really, filmmaking can affect all corners of the way we think and the way we feel. One of the key things that I think we have to really understand about the entertainment world is that here in America, it is our second largest taxable export. And if you think about that from the financial aspect, from the banking aspect of what that really, really means, country to country, and then what that means politically, because politically, we are losing all of our arts programs. Politically, our governments are shutting down all of our arts programs, which is in direct conflict with the fact that this raises more money, entertainment raises more money for all of our countries and all of our government's taxes than almost any other revenue that we make. So one of the things that we have to get clear about in each and all of the countries that we serve is that entertainment is bringing more tax revenue than only one other thing that's happening. And our politicians are trying to crush this venue. And even though I have gone to the Capitol and discussed this with senators, there is no logic in this relationship between entertainment and government. And this is something that we really, really, really need a bridge to because it does not make sense. We understand that recidivism in prisons is absolutely directly affected by arts programs. When prisoners have arts programs, they don't go back to prison. A direct fact, it's a fact. But the government cancels those arts programs. Are prisons more financially serving the country and the community? Are they more financially rewarding? No, entertainment is, we know that. But it's more oppressive <laughs> to put people in prison. So we have to start looking at what is cooperative entertainment development? What does that really mean? And what do we put the grants forward for? And where are our political liaisons? Where are our lobbyists that are helping us with this political giant misunderstanding and this oppression that's coming back and forth? Because frankly, banks work with the government and they must work with the government for banks to stay afloat. So one of the key things we have to do is get the government in league with the understanding that this is one of our largest taxable resources. This is one of the key elements that we have here, whether you have 800 films a year in Hollywood or 3,000 years, 3,000 films a year in India, an incredibly impoverished environment, we need to start to see a cooperative effect between the government and the entertainment community because it's the only thing that has logic, right? So we have to start figuring out why, why we are having this freeze. We look at the fact that when I started working on AIDS, there were nine to 11 million people with AIDS. When I would go and speak, people did not want to listen. They didn't want to hear. Then we had 20 million, 30 million. Then eventually we have 40 million people die of AIDS, right? But we couldn't get people to get, we have to get an AIDS vaccine, right? We still don't have an AIDS vaccine, right? When we had COVID, immediately we flew into getting a vaccine. But why don't we fly into getting an AIDS vaccine? 
Why, when we flew into getting an AIDS va uh, COVID vaccine, didn't we not fly into getting an AIDS vaccine? Because we, as entertainments, have the opportunity to influence what happens. There are, what, 200 people in the Congress and the Senate in my country. In each country, how many people are in government? And you look at how many people are in entertainment and you see how many films come out a year, 800, 2,000, 3,000. The influence that is happening in the entertainment community is greater than the amount of people and influence and policymakers that are happening in government. And yet the resistance from government is far greater, even though the benefits to government are far greater than any resistance. So why aren't we working hand in hand? We have to figure this out. Why are we not working hand in hand? Why when we have so many, why when we are beneficial to one another, are we not working hand in hand? Why when we could, for example, organize these 5013Cs country to country, to be working developmentally together through the entertainment group. All these people, Matt uh, Damon is putting in water wells in one country, for example. Why are we not as an entertainment organization helping other people organize putting in seeds and uh, lights and um, Muhammad Yunus's microloans in the same places that those water wells are going in. If we're going to give grants, why aren't we giving them logically? So that all of these, all grants go in to repair whole in a whole way. So that there's a wholeness to the grants that we give. So that we organize our grant giving so that when we're reparative, we repair in a wholeness. So there is a whole, a wholeness in the way that we think about our grant giving and our, and our movement forward. So that when we move forward, we move forward in a unified way. So that why isn't government benefiting entertainment, entertainment working together when we know we're providing these services? When we know we can provide grants, why don't we provide grants that work beneficially with other grants? When we know like Muhammad Yunus won the Nobel Prize for the microloan, why aren't we put bringing microloans in with say, another organization, the heifer organization to bring livestock into a place that's bringing water into a place that's bringing seeds? Why aren't we bringing all the wholeness in instead of just throwing spaghetti at a wall? I think we have to think about what we do because we are the one thing entertainment that is a global touch. We go beyond policy. We go beyond every other business in the world. I know this specifically because Sharon Stone is like Tampax or Q-tips. It's a word that goes into the Amazon rainforest. It's a word that goes into Dubai. It's a word that goes into Saudi Arabia. It's a word that goes into China. It's a word that goes into Brazil. I'm no longer just, I'm Sharon, but Sharon Stone is a, is a global construct that goes everywhere. And by understanding what happened with my fame, I've came to understand what happens by creating a unified perspective once I became a global um, being. I understood that everything is a global reality. And we have the opportunity through entertainment to touch on a, in a global way and then to heal and impact in a global way. So when we do that, if we do it logically and sensibly, we can actually heal communities in a whole way.